<laughs> How are you? Hi. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hi, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. Good to Hi. see, nice to see so you. many shiny faces. That's <laughs> <laughs> oh, great to see everybody. That's not the way we did it set up at all. Sorry, getting there. Yeah, that's a good, you know what? That's a good idea. Why not? Oh, Susan, you're at the gallery. Hmm. Yes. I, I don't have any Wi Fi at home, so. <laughs> I was wondering what, what's going on. Still no Wi Fi. Wow. It's a long, it's a long, tedious story. <laughs> oh, you have so many people coming. That's nice. Come on in. <laughs> <laughs> So we're just going to take a few more minutes and let people come in. Wave to Lee and the artists <laughs> that are uh, talking today. And then we're going to start our PowerPoint. Let's see all the beautiful work. What do you think, Susan? Are we ready to start? We should start. Yes, I think that's a great idea. So, so welcome everyone to our 440 Gallery Artist Talk. I'm Karen Gibbons. I'm one of the artists. So if you don't know already, we're an artist-run gallery. And um, today we're going to be talking about uh, four of our artists, Lee Blanchard is have, has a solo show up in the gallery now, Impressions, and we're going to look at her work and ask her some questions. And then we'll go on to the work in the project space that's also on view now. Um, it's all up through April 18th, and the project space show is called Over Time, and we'll talk about the work of Catlin Miller, Janet Peterson, and Robin Roy. Um, so if you're anywhere near the gallery, I encourage you to go and see this work in real life because um, it's amazing, all of it. And um, we're keeping social distancing. You could see Susan's got her mask on. We have a filter in the gallery and we like to keep the door open if we can. Um, so please come by if you can, but I'm so happy we can do this and uh, talk to people that are uh, anywhere in the world. So um, if you have questions, I'm going to ask the questions I'm moderating today. And if you have questions, please um, put them in the chat 
or if you want to wait to the end and unmute yourself, I think Susan's going to mute everybody so that we don't have background noise while we're um, talking with the artists, but we'll try to get to all the Oops, oh, I'm sorry, Karen, I muted you. Sorry. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll try to get to all the questions um, uh, before we close. And um, without further ado, let's look at impressions, Lee Blanchard. So first we'll look at the installation shot so you can see what it looks like in the gallery um, and get an idea of the scale. Yeah, and I'll get, I can give you all a brief um, overview of some of the works as you're looking at them just for um, scale and context. Um, so the, the body of the work started in 2018 and it's ongoing. So some pieces were made um, as recent as early 2021. And there are nine works hanging. Uh, two pieces are on fabric and the rest are on uh, photo paper. Um, and the scale goes from the smallest being about 16 inches square to the largest being 46 by 65 inches. So is this one um, the largest? That's, yeah, that's the largest piece in the show. And this and, is fabric, right? Mm -hmm, that's a detailed shot of the fabric, yeah. And so those pieces are 16 by 20 or 22 by 16 if you're going height and then width. And then there's one piece that's framed um, and the rest are uh, face mounted to plexi board. And that's a detail shot of the framed piece. So now we can yeah go through oh, each yeah. piece and everyone can look through them, um, and then we can. Um, and then yeah, yeah. And then I'll ask questions and um, Lee, you can direct um, Susan back to whichever one you'd like to speak about. Sure. Great, so that's every every piece. Yeah, so Lee, congratulations on such a beautiful solo show. Your Thanks. work is fresh and original. I love the imagery, the textures, the sense of abstraction. And together the work is very cohesive and yet I'm struck about how each individual piece creates its own mood, almost a world of its own. Um, can you talk about your inspiration and approach as you begin a piece? Uh, sure. So um, this series started actually when I was working um, at a photography gallery and I was surrounded by a lot of mid 20th century photography and the owner had a lot of books, pretty much like any photo book you could even conjure up in your head. She had it. Um, so I also had access at that time um, to a very large flatbed scanner. And one of my tasks there was to um, archive the images in our inventory. So as I was scanning, I sort of thought about, you know, with all these 
um, photographs in my head and um, all these books around me, I was thinking about the similarities between the scanner, the process of scanning and, um, and early photograms, which is an early photographic technique. And for those of you who don't know, it's a process of making a photographic image without a camera um, where you place objects on light sensitive material and expose it to light. Um, so that's sort of how it began. Um, I began using the scanner to make art. It's a process called scanography and uh, photograms were a big influence uh, and inspiration for that. Nice. So um, creating digital images is so wonderful and mysterious to some of us. And it sounds like you've, um, you know, really made friends with the scanner as you, um, you know, in what you were just talking about. And um, do you think you could explain your technique so that we can understand it a little better? Yeah, sure. Um, so for every piece, it starts out with um, a photogram as, um, as sort of like the base influence. So um, I either use, like I would look at um, photograms from books and maybe scan an image of a piece that I really liked, or I would go online and, um, and find a, uh, a piece that inspired me and I would print them out. And then my first thing that I would do is um, with scissors, um, take it and just kind of cut out different objects that I liked in the piece. Um, so that was the base for every piece. And then for these larger pieces, like the one you see here, um, it depends on what's there, but actually this is a great example. Um, in one of the photograms that I was really drawn to, um, there was some like a the person who made it their hand was in, um, on the piece. So I cut out the outline of their fingers and I used my own hands. Um, and then I would include other um, objects around me. And um, one thing I really noticed about early photograms that I really loved and um, that was so cool is that there was a sense of like spontaneity, like they kind of looked around themselves in the dark room and saw like what objects are around me that I can use. So I begin accumulating these objects and I place them on the bed of the scanner. And then for a large image, like some of the larger pieces here, um, to scan an image that high res, um, it takes maybe 10, 15 minutes. So as the light is going across the bed of the scanner, I have my objects on there and I get to kind of play with them and move them around. Um, so it's sort of part collage, part um, digital image um, as I'm moving the uh, pieces across. Thank you, you explained that really well. Um, oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> and um, what strikes me is that it's such a dance between control where you, you're cutting things out, you have completely have control and then spontaneity because of the um, uh, chance that is um, the scanner's light that you're really working blind in a way, right? Mm -hmm. um, so um, I'm just wondering about um, how that affects your uh, thoughts about line and form and uh, color and um, and maybe like in specific in a specific piece, if you wanted to talk about this piece. Sure. Yeah. So um, a piece like this one, um, especially the larger pieces, I think, you know, there were so many more visual elements going into it. Um, like, and I mean that by saying like there were more objects on the scanner typically on these pieces. Um, so with that, with the piece being um, larger, and I knew I wanted it to be larger. Um, it was higher resolution. So it took longer for the, um, the light to go across. So with that and the visual elements, there being more of them, there was definitely less control there. Um, as I was moving the pieces across, since there were so many, I didn't always know really at all what it was gonna look like. Sometimes I had some okay guesses. Um, and so for a piece like this, where you can really see the outline of a, of one of the kind of floral shapes there. Um, in that part, I kept the object still. Um, so that's why you can see the outline of it. So there, that's sort of the play of control. I had more control over that. I knew at the end of the process that you'd be able to see a bit of the outline of that. But then as I was moving things, that part, I 
really had no idea. Um, and then for the smaller images, there was definitely more control um, because there were less visual variables. And um, so with that, it was easier to kind of predict what things could look like. And then there's also the added element of the color, which is added um, later in Photoshop. Um, so even though the colors, they, they're not random, I, I picked them, um, kind of sourced them from the original pieces. So for example, this green, the image with the hand that we were looking at earlier, there's little green leaves in there and that's where that green color comes from. So, so the color, color isn't... Um, Can you go back to that one, Susan, please? Uh, that piece, yeah. Oh, not that one, the, the one, next one. The next one, yeah. Yeah, so that green there that you see in the leaves, that's the color that I sourced um, to be the green that was added. So, so that had a lot more control um, because I was doing things later in Photoshop and it wasn't all in the scanner. Um, so um, yeah, there's piece, definitely a mixture. But excuse me, uh, I, I just want to clarify. So a piece like this, all the color is in the scanner. Yes, correct. And like the pink is your hand and the mm -hmm. green is your is a uh, a cutout that you've made. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah, nothing mm -hmm. was added um, for this piece. Only the smaller, more colorful pieces, um, I had a little more control over. So yeah, the whole series, there's definitely, um, it really depends on each piece. There's almost no control to having like a nice amount of control. So yeah, it definitely varies. Um, thank you. So who or what inspires you? So I'm thinking of artists, but you know, um, the, there's so many elements that come into it. I'm curious. Yeah. Um, well, for this series, of course, um, photograms were a big inspiration and, um, I used, you know, actual pieces from old photograms. So those artists include, um, Laszlo Moholy Naj, uh, Man Ray, Imogen Cunningham. And then the title of the series actually, um, Impressions, is taken from uh, the first um, book illustrated with uh, photographs actually uh, by Anna Atkins. It was called British Algae Cyanotype Impressions. So um, yeah, the whole work is definitely inspired by that, but um, other than photographs specifically, I have to admit, I'm very <laughs> inspired by just photography in general. It's definitely my biggest visual inspiration. Um, and some of my favorite artists include Erica Baum and Uta Barth. Yeah, amazing, amazing photographers. Yeah, that's so interesting because um, uh, it's so leaning towards abstraction. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and it's, they're almost painterly. And um, uh, I, I just have one more question. I, I wanted to hear more about the shapes in, could you go back please, Susan? Um, I'm sorry, I don't know your titles. Um, the one that's on fabric. Yes. The largest one on fabric, this one. Yeah. Yeah, can you just talk a little bit more about um, the specific inspiration for the shapes. And uh, I Definitely. said when we uh, were hanging this, it looks like there's a secret message here. <laughs> yeah, so um, yeah, this piece has a little, like an, especially if you see in person or, or closer up, there's um, text in there that you can kind of start to read a little bit. And this image was an old um, Laszlo Moholy Naj photogram. I can't say the year exactly off the top of my head, but it was done for um, an early photographic magazine. So it was the cover of a magazine and the magazine was called Broom. Um, I think it was actually just an arts magazine. There might've been other um, mediums in it, but um, that was the start of it. So I kind of cut out each shape there and it kind of made me think, um, you know, I was already so inspired by reading all these photographic books and here I was sourcing like a magazine cover. So I wanted to include more um, of like actually having, you know, the photographic books in there. So some of the text is, um, is I would, 
it was actually, that was a hard collage kind of to make because I had some books on top of the scanner and was kind of moving them with, um, with the photogram and other, uh, you know, pieces of fabric and things like that to add some texture. Um, but yeah, that one is definitely a lot about like the, yeah, the, um, having that like text be kind of the base, uh, you know, of, of inspiration for that piece. Thank you. And um, I just have one more question. Um, you uh, choose your materials really carefully so that they um, really make the, the projection of the piece really strong. And so I wonder how you decide between, you know, like, would you ever print this one on fabric and, and or would you ever print the fabric one on, uh, you know, another material? How do you decide? Yeah, I think um, the large pieces I've printed um, both ways and I'm very comfortable doing both. Um, I think the small pieces, since they were, I just wanted to have a bit of like a, a kind of punchiness to them, I guess is the best way I can describe it. Um, because I thought they might get, you know, lost a little bit kind of on this delicate fabric. So I'm definitely, I would be into experimenting with it and maybe depending on the exhibition, they wouldn't get lost. But for this in um, show in particular, the larger pieces um, on fabric, you know, they, they really still make a statement um, because of the size. Um, whereas the smaller pieces, um, the printing process is just with the, you know, face mounting to plexi just is really clear and sharp and, um, and just really makes them shine, I think, so. I agree. Well, thank you Thanks. so much, Lee. Uh, I see yeah. there's a bunch of questions, but we're gonna circle back to those after we take a look at over time. Sure. So let's move yeah. on to the project space. Hey, um, Karen, I'm sorry, just to interrupt for one moment. There's someone at the gallery right now that was just asking what kind of fabric um, Lee printed on. So if we could just jump to that question just for a moment. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, so it's it's actually a, um, it, it's a dye sublimation. The process is called dye sublimation. It's basically um, a process in order to get an image onto fabric. The fabric that I'm using in particular is a type that's used actually typically for um, for commercial purposes, like when you have an image printed on it and it's backlit. Um, so that's typically uh, what it's used for. Um, but I, I picked it out specifically because um, I saw a bunch of samples of different fabrics and I just liked the way it draped. Some other ones kind of were a little stiff or it kind of like curl a little bit. And this one just really draped nicely. Thank you very much. I'm just yeah. gonna run and tell the- uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Susan. Um, just to let you know the fact- Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I see there's a number of questions, but we'll get back to that. But um, you explained that so beautifully. And uh, I wish that everybody could see how these look um, how there are objects really that, mm -hmm. um, that, you know, kind of have the life of their own, um, standing on the wall. So, uh, um, and thank you, Susan. So Susan, we're going to move on to over time and thank you, Lee. Thank you. So, uh, our first artist, oh, first we're going to see the um, installation in case you can't make it to the gallery and also so you can see this scale. And as always, the amazing variety, but then also the interconnections of all the pieces. Um, it's almost magical how this happens. So now we'll start with Janet Peterson. So Janet, uh, oh, so let's take a look at Janet's work first. Uh, so Janet, you could just um, say what size these are and what 
medium? Yeah. So these are a series of still lives that are 12 by 12 inches. Um, they are works on paper and um, there are about 10 in the series. Um, um, five are hanging on the wall and uh, five are in the drawer. <laughs> so, um, and they're hung with tacks, but they're hung, um, you know, just to, uh, they're square, kind of a contemporary uh, format, I suppose. Um, uh, but they, it, they just, the compositions lended themselves for being uh, a square format. And they're, paint, they're painted in flash, which is a kind of, uh, it's a vinyl paint, but it's, it's I guess you could say it's a, like an acrylic or even like a gouache. It dries very fast, but when it does dry, it dries um, to the color that I apply it. It doesn't dry darker, which uh, usually that's what a, an acrylic paint would do. And uh, I was kind of just testing out this medium and I really liked it so much that I ended up, uh, you know, setting the canvas aside and trying paper because I, I like some of the paper to show through the natural white of the paper. Um, and in general, those lighter areas, which uh, you see here, that is the paper. So um, I'm and I'm layering and I'm using a little bit of a Conte uh, uh, pencil to just reinforce certain areas or just line making. Okay. Um, sorry. Yeah, oh, thank you, Janet. Um, these are so lovely and juicy and full of light and life. Almost the opposite of what we sometimes associate with still life painting. What drew you to paint still lives at this time? Well, um, I was trying to figure out a body of work for this coming up show, the show that we're seeing today. And um, I, uh, it was still COVID out and it was winter. And um, I, I wanted to paint something in front of me, not from Zoom or, um, you know, some of the images that I had done for my dance series, which were largely from, uh, you know, photo scrap or, or YouTube videos. <laughs> So I started to just look around me and, uh, you know, looking at objects that, um, you know, something that I might have seen in the corner of a room or something and uh, uh, just celebrate shape, you know, the, you know, a still life has got all the shapes, all the basic shapes are included in a still life. And I set it off to the corner of my studio which gets the natural light. And so these feel like almost to me like plein air paintings because I'm painting them in a duration of time, which I normally would do a, a painting plein air about two hours, perhaps. Um, I'm painting kind of fairly you know, fast with bold colors, which is the way I tend to paint. And um, I just wanted to keep it simple and kind of go back to the basics of, of painting and a still life just felt like the right thing to do. So, um, and, and um, you know, just trying out composition. What the, the objects themselves are what I saw and I tend to um, take liberties with the background a little bit and add my own background. And I do that for no other reason just to um, you know, work with the object. So the negative space or the background, I'm sort of playing with that to just enhance and you know, keep it abstract. Yeah, um, so, and so, so yeah, that kind of brings me to the next question. Thank you. Um, the, the subject matter is so charming in its simplicity. Uh, so, you've talked about how you decide what to paint, but they're so uh, intimate. It's almost like, like you just turned your head and there it was. But uh, can you talk about how you um, create that intimacy? Is it um, composition? Is it that, that, uh, that tendency towards abstracting the backgrounds? Um, well, um, I, you know, I'm setting these pretty close to me so that that in and of itself is sort of an intimate thing. Um, I uh, choosing 
something like this literally was my breakfast this morning. Um, <laughs> I mean, that morning and um, choosing the salt or the pepper shaker next to it was just uh, something to, you know, pull another element in. I, I'm, I do my morning pages. I've been really interested in doing morning pages. And for anybody that is not familiar with that, it's just writing randomly in the morning in my notebook. And at the end of it, I just felt like, okay, I'm ready to paint. I'll take this while I'm downstairs. I'll take that. I'll put it, put it together, switch it around a little bit. And it's really, it's just my home life, really. Um, wanting so it to feel, I want it to feel kind of natural and not so planned. You know, I don't want to have too much of a design for it. I'd rather take care of that on my own as I'm working. And uh, the challenge is, is to keep it fresh and not change things, but get it, you know. Work yeah, with yeah. It. Um, I have one more question. So when I look at these, even though they're these simple, uh, direct uh, studies, really, um, I think of abstraction, I think of landscape, I even think of color field painting. Um, what artists influence uh, or what inspiration? do you have from other artists? Well, I'm, I've lately, I've been looking a lot at, um, at an artist, his name is, was, is Charles Sovac. And he is a, uh, he's a landscape. Um, he's a, he's a figurative painter. He does a lot of plein air painting and he is, uh, has passed away, but he, just the way he models things, um, form, his whole theory on form building in his paintings is what I've been reading a lot about. And a lot of this was, I wanted to do these still lives because I wanted to keep learning how to paint, how to paint still lives. And uh, so anyways, Charles Sobeck and, and for Jane Freilicher, only because I'm also reading about her and uh, I like the way she really um, makes her paintings about her home and her views, the views from her windows and her still lifes. Um, they're very, they're just, they're precious. You know, you could tell that she fell in love with what she set up. So you could tell that from her work. Thank you, Janet. Thanks, Karen. Um, so we're gonna move on to, I think we have Robin next, let's see. Yes, Robin Roy. So let's take a look at Robin's work. Uh, so you could see these behind Susan right now, I think. So they're small, th these four. And then there's also this one is quite large. Um, and then there's one more shot or, or two more shots, right? Yeah, and then uh, I'm anxious to ask Robin. Robin, your work is magnificent and it's truly a marriage of fine and decorative art. Can you speak about what led you to this exquisite hybrid? Um, yeah, I, uh, I worked for a decorative painting company um, for over 30 years, along with my career as, as a, you know, as an, a studio artist, I had this full-time career um, working for a company named Evergreen. And um, I researched and studied and learned about the decorative arts of all cultures everywhere from all over the world. And I learned so many techniques. Uh, I learned about materials and techniques that I'd never known about. And all of that really influenced my, uh, my own personal work. So I think it sort of arrived at what we said was like a hybrid. Yeah, so beautiful, thank you. Um, so sometimes with such successful execution, it's impossible for the viewer to know what the materials were used to, to create this striking look of uh, the work. So in these four small pieces, 
Um, I understand you use metal leaf. Can you talk about your materials and your process? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, all, all four of these are pretty much done the same way. I leafed, the, I work, I, these are done on birch board. Um, so it's a, a, a hard surface. And I gilded or leafed them with silver and copper and um, what I call Dutch metal or composition gold. So each of them has a, a, you know, a different sort of substrate. And these are metals that are very sensitive. Uh, well, they can be easily tarnished. They can be easily oxidized just if they're sitting out in the air. But in order to force it, I applied chemicals to the surfaces and that oxidizes the surface. And you see all of that activity that is going on behind some of the imagery is what happens just, or what happened just naturally and very spontaneously. And I love that, uh, I love the activity of taking that sort of chaos and pulling it in and creating something beautiful with it. So on top of that surface, um, I painted and collaged uh, the images, the images that you see. Thank and then I, I then seal the surface so it doesn't continue to oxidize. So that's how we still have that beautiful shimmer to it. Right, right. Um, thank you. So uh, my last question is um, about what influences you, but I'd also like to focus on the large piece, the last piece. Can you move to that? Yeah. Um, and, and hear a bit about this because I know there's such an interesting story. Well, if you go maybe, so this piece is, first of all, the, the smaller pieces we just looked at were done about a year and a half ago. This piece was done in the early 1980s uh, at the height of the pattern and decoration movement, at, which I was very involved with. And uh, the reason I wanted to show this along with the newer work really is to show that, you know, over time, as our title says, um, some of the same themes and ideas have, uh, have followed me or I've followed them. And if you maybe go to the next slide, which is a detail of this so we can see it better. And this piece is, is um, you know, like almost two feet wide, but it's about 80 inches long. So it's very, 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 very long, like wallpaper. Can you go to the next side, slide, Susan, please? Thanks. Yeah. So we can just see this is all done on paper, was gouache on paper. And um, I have just always been very, uh, I love pattern. I absolutely love pattern that is from all different cultures, but I've been particularly influenced by Asian cultures. And I have no idea why, maybe, you know, former life, I was born in Asia somewhere. But um, uh, so I just wanted to, uh, again, show this connection to the, the, the more current work. This particular piece had a mate. So this is called Scenes from a Battle, Hers. And there was a Scenes from a Battle, His, which you can see on the right-hand side. And, um, they were meant to kind of have a dialogue between them so that the fans in the left-hand side became the bridges on the right-hand side. And the, the scene down the middle is actually from Uccello's uh, scenes from a battle. And it's, it's this you know, violent battle scene and all the spears uh, sort of mimic the shapes of the chopsticks that are in the women's hair. And uh, I was told this, that the chopsticks in the geisha's hair uh, indicate bad love affairs. So I thought that had a lot of resonance with uh, the male battle scene. Sort of the, fe the male and the female versions of, of battles. And uh, in the, if you go back, go back to the detail, Susan, can you just, yeah. So in the background, you can see this red flame-like pattern 
behind the geisha's heads, which is like a kimono pattern in the female version. And in the male version, it becomes flames uh, be in the battle scene. So um, unfortunately, scenes from a battle, his was sold long ago. So these, these lovers were separated, which I regret. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Robin. Um, did you say that these are painted in gouache? Yes, they are. They are gouache on paper. Okay, so beautiful and uh, amazing, really, so meticulous. Um, thank you, Robin. Yes, thank you. And now we'll move on to Catlin Miller. So let's take a look at Catlin's work. So as you saw in the installation, this is uh, a 3D piece that stands, Catlin, how tall is it? Like four and a half feet tall? This piece is about eight by eight by four, four feet. And each cube oh. is about two inches by one inch. Yeah, so let's just look at everything first and then I have some questions for Catlin. They're uh, so luminous. And uh, Catelyn, uh, I understand working with the images of the body are uh, as a common theme for you and in your work. And I'm fascinated how you translate something that's uh, inherently 3D and moving and, and sort of, uh, I know you reference performance and uh, into this light layered image that is so much uh, about uh, it, it's, it's being held in this solid form. Um, can you please talk about your process? Yeah, sure. Um, <clears throat> so my process is uh, multi-stage and usually the very first stage is uh, some sort of memory, uh, you know, some sort of personal memory that I have. Um, and then I follow that up with a performance or a, a photographing um, me in some sort of movement. Um, so I use my, in that way, I use my own body as a way of evoking those memories or experiences that my body holds. And in this case, it was the act, uh, the childlike act of twirling that I was remembering and experiencing. So once I have these photographs, I print them on clear transparency paper and, and then I cut them out and I embed them in resin and I place the cubes in a pressure resin pot uh, where they stay for you know, 24 hours. It's a, it's a, a long methodical process. Uh, there were probably about 200 cubes that I made you know, in total for this piece and then edited out you know, ones that I didn't like. Um, and so wow. it's uh, also a very obsessive process for me. For some reason, I haven't been able to let go of, of, of it for now. So I, I work with the images of the body as uh, in the resin as a material. And so then I, I work with it as a building block. And I am thinking a lot about uh, identity, gendered bodies, skin color, how we see ourselves and, and how others around us see. And so I basically deconstruct and reconstruct my body through this piece. Um, and sometimes I like to think that I'm, you know, as I make the artwork, I'm, I'm writing a song with my own language of body form and surface, and that I'm creating a system with all these rules that I then, you know, try to break in small ways. Thank you. Wow. Um, so when I look at this, I, I am drawn to, to look inside it uh, literally and it also has this sense of going within. The little snippets are, like you say, are sort of like memory or um, a, like a very intimate, personal um, snapshot. And but at the same time, it's very outward. And um, and you know where the the shape is forming, sort of a uh, you know outward walls of a building or. Um, a form, and um, I'm wondering if you could say more about your intention with this inward and outward kind of juxtaposition. Yeah, thank you. That's uh, such an interesting question because one of the uh, things uh, when I was thinking about this piece after I'd created it that I felt as though uh, this piece is called fluidity, fluidity 
And I felt as though, you know, it was me taking a breath in and then, you know, slowly exhaling, you know, all of these, you know, parts of uh, uh, exhaling slowly. And so I imagine these excerpts of my body and myself coming out and then like falling, you know, into place. And, um, you know, so that the breath is warm, it comes out and then it freezes and becomes icy cold. Um, so my work is, um, you know, it is so process oriented and from the beginning, I'm looking to somehow contain my, my movement in an out body way. And, um, and I'm interested in the material aspects of making art, you know, and creating surfaces that reflect light and they, it reflects the light and then, uh, reflects it back to the viewer. And so some of my artwork has a light source, an actual light source. Uh, this one doesn't, which is slightly different. And, um, you know, I feel like it's creating its own light and then reflecting back um, to, to the viewer and so that they can see themselves in, in it. Um, so I'm also trying to draw a connection between the way we live in our home and I'm looking at our imperfect aging um, and flawed and beautiful bodies. And I'm wondering how we fit amongst the more stable and movable objects around us. So I'm interested. Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to take a minute to go to the cat piece also. Um, Susan, can you just move us down to the, yeah. So this is also luminous and also has kind of a grid going on. Can you just speak a little bit about this piece? Yeah, this piece is called Everything is Going to be Just Fine. And, you know, this is about, um, you know, you know, it's a, it, it's about um, two, two things for me. It's about, you know, sort of post uh, parent versus, you know, parent parenting and kind of, you know, uh, it, what, what parenting over the past year has been like for me. And, um, and then the other thing that it represents for me with the grid is, um, you know, I'm interested in that space between reality and the digital space and virtual, virtual space. And so I'm imagining this uh, creature, you know, somehow being a combination of the two. It's so material based, it's been glazed, it's, you know, a ceramic piece. And yet, you know, uh, it's supposed to, you know, somehow, um, uh, uh, transcend that, you know, into this digital world, uh, you know, with the grid, with, with the same sort of grid. Interesting. Uh, and then just one quick last question for you. Um, who is your uh, inspiration? What artists inspire you? Yeah, I mean, right now I've been looking in general at architecture uh, a lot, you know, in terms of the, you know, the, the buildings around us. Um, and then, an, uh, there are a couple of artists. Uh, I've been looking a lot uh, at Anthony Gormley's sculptures um, and being really influenced by not just um, his sculptures, but the concepts that went behind them. And um, and I'm also uh, have been looking at Letha Wilson. She's a, a sculptor who 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 puts photographs onto steel uh, structures, and um, you know, and and so I'm interested in the intermingling of those two processes. Thank you, Catelyn. And uh, thank you to all the artists. I think we have time to go back to our questions now. So um, let's just take a look. Uh, so Sarah Bloom said, first question is, I'd like to hear about your process, which I think um, Lee talked about pretty well. But um, Sarah, if, just unmute yourself if you have a specific question that you want to add about the process. Uh, and yeah, she if, answered it very well. Okay, thanks, yeah. Sarah. I asked <laughs> and, that before you barely started. I threw that question out there. <laughs> no, yeah, and um, I said I was going to wait till the end because I'm just not very adept at reading and talking at the same time. So I have to wait till the end to read the questions. So we might have some repetition. Um, so Anna Blanchard says, gorgeous, which piece took the longest to create from start to finish? Um, that's that's actually, for Lee. yeah, that's a, a great question because um, overall it's, it's really hard to say the, the bigger pieces um, either on photo paper or fabric either one, they were so high res. And um, one thing I kind of left out of the process actually 
was the fact that um, the images are, you know, as is untouched. I don't, I don't add anything or tweak anything really. But with a scanner, um, scanning so high res, I get a lot of um, dust on the file. And if I'm also printing them really large, I want all that kind of stuff that's not supposed to be there gone. So actually the thing that takes the most time, I mean, the image may be done after 15 minutes or so technically, but then um, cleaning up all the dust off the file takes, um, I, don't, I don't even know how long, <laughs> like each piece probably took about um, like a month of working on it off and on. Um, like days of, of editing. It's, it's, <laughs> those pieces take a long time. Um, the smaller ones though uh, are much faster. Well, thanks for sharing that. I appreciate that because the work is so clean and, um, and it really shows the care that you put into it. Thanks. Uh, okay, so the next question is Sarah Bloom again. Is the combination of cutout pieces, scanography, and color manipulation then printed in one piece, or are there multiple layers of paper? Oh, that's a great question, too. Um, they're all one layer. Um, so the scan, that there may be multiple layers on the, um, on the scanner as I'm making the piece, but the, the file, once it's done, it's, it's all one uh, one layer. Um, and then Susan asked about the fabric and we we already covered that. <laughs> um, Joanne AC says, great show. Could you can you tell us about your framing decisions? Yeah. Um, so in terms of the the pieces on fabric, of course I wanted those to just kind of float freely. Um, I wasn't interested in having them constrained with a, a frame or anything. And then um, I would be interested in exploring framing for some of the smaller pieces, but I just really liked the way they looked kind of almost like the way they look on a computer screen. They're just sort of there and glowing. And, um, and they, I just, I just loved the way they look so clean without anything around it distracting from the pieces. Um, so, but the, the larger piece uh, to add a little white frame along the side with the, um, the piece with the flowers that, yeah, that piece right there. Um, oh yeah, you can I've, show the, um, the installation shot. Oh yeah, you can show shot. the install shot, yeah. Um, I thought it really, the white frame really um, brought out some of the white in the, in the middle of the piece with the flowers. So um, I guess it's just kind of, it depends on each piece. I think some of them I'd be interested in seeing them a few different ways. Um, but for this show in particular, I also was thinking about just sort of uh, kind of a going a texture throughout the show. So you'd see a piece with the frame, you'd see a piece without, um, you'd see a piece on fabric and you just wouldn't, you wouldn't never get bored. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and also um, I just wanted to say that the, the ones without frames are quite protected. There's a, it's a, acrylic surface it's not yes. um it's not delicate mm -hmm. yeah, correct i just had one question um uh, lucky me i got to spend three hours looking at these very closely um this mm -hmm. week so um they're all just beautiful but i was wondering about the plexiglass um is that a process you take to a special place to do it's just so yes. clean and crisp and and i like the frame i like all the way they're presented but i I hadn't really seen this kind of a technique um, on pieces like this, and I was just a little curious. Yeah, um, it's um, I think it's kind of a contemporary technique, and some of these pieces were just felt so contemporary to me that I um, wanted them to look like I was saying before, like just almost like an image on your screen. Um, so that yeah, that's a process that um, you have to take into a specialist. I'm not even sure. I'm sure there's a lot of chemicals and things that I, I don't know how to do. So <laughs> yeah, a framing Beautiful. shop could do that. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thanks, Joanne. So Lynn Cole says, uh, what is the printing process? Um, for so these I you, pieces? I think you touched on a little bit. Um, um, yeah, so yeah, for some of these pieces, um, you know, I, I actually have a printer here, so I'm able to, um, print on archival photo paper. Um, some of these pieces, you know, I, I have a 
uh, it can only print so large. So I'll have to take in some of them to get them printed. But I, I go in, I look at the test prints, I do the editing, um, I'll do a few tweaks here and there. And then um, the pieces on photo paper are then um, mounted on the back to, uh, to aluminum and then uh, face mounted to plexi. Um, and then the one piece has the frame around it. And um, the fabric pieces um, are also very specific technique that I don't have um, the printer for. So it's a dye sublimation printing technique. And I also uh, get that done at a lab as well. Thanks, Lee. Yeah. Um, Elise Lobelson says, this is a very beautiful show. Mm -hmm. Joanne Acey says, such luscious and fresh color. Nancy Lunsford says, what kind of, oh, and I think we're on to Janet now. Uh, what kind of paint is this? Is it water soluble? I know she said it was flash. Um, do you want to say more about it, Janet? Are you here still, Janet? I'm not hearing Janet, but um, here I am. Oh, <laughs> <there you laughs> um, it is. It's uh, a medium. It's called flash. It's vinyl. Um, you can work it on canvas or paper, um, dries fairly fast, but it has a, a feeling of gouache. So when it actually finally dries, it, it's like a matte finish. And it's great. That's great for photography if you want to photograph your work. So animators used to use this medium anim for animation and it's vinyl. Oh, I'm very interested. Um, and then Nancy also said Charles Sovak. I think she's wondering the Spelling is it S O V A K? Uh, S O V E K. Okay. It's Charles Sovek, and he he's just an amazing painter, very immediate and loose. I like him. Thanks, Janet. Hi, Nancy uh, Lunsford. <laughs> and and Amy Weil says uh, just gorgeous. Oh, Joanne AC said, uh, "What is the medium?" I think we just covered that, unless. I'm not sure if she was asking about Robbins, if we- Maybe Robin. I'm not yeah. sure where the, the line went. To, and that, then Sarah Bloom says, incredible work, brilliant. Uh, where is the cat figure yeah. in this? This was Catlin, but I, it was my mistake. I didn't realize the cat figure was a separate. Okay, and, um, <laughs> and, and so your question's answered, okay. And um, Amy says, I agree with Sarah Bloom. Uh, Joanne Acey says, inward and outward like windows. That's a nice association for Catlin. Um, Sarah Bloom says, fantastic show. Nathan Dennis says, uh, Lee, do you have a photo of the bigger piece on fabric so we can see the difference between paper and fabric? Also, why is all your art so amazing? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's my fiance, <laughs> uh, biggest supporter. Um, I do have a, a picture. Um, maybe I'll post that on our, our Facebook or Instagram or something. Oh, that's a great a idea. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, one more question. Anna Blanchard says, Lee, what inspires the objects that you pick for the scanning process? Does the object ever come first? Um, the object? So, I, they all kind of start the first inspiration would definitely be um, a photogram that I'm seeing. So um, in in those pieces, like, you know, sometimes they'll they'll have like they're part of a human body on, like on the piece of paper or um, they'll have what you can tell is like studio equipment in the dark room. Um, they'll have like botanical uh, objects. So it, it that's usually how it started for this series at least. And then I sometimes like build off of it. So if I s really liked the shape of a flower in a photogram, I'll take that and then I'll um, add in some more flowers that I found like outside. And um, so that's, yeah, that's how that can build. Thanks Lee. Um, and then there's one more comment that says Robin Roy's work is also incredible. <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, I just want to make sure if there anybody else had a question, if they want to just unmute and um, direct it to the artist. And if not, I have a question. Ah, okay. <laughs> Hi. 
This is a question for Lee. I just wanted her to just reflect on how her work has evolved from the beginning stages of shooting film, taking pictures to where you are now, because it's been a few years. And I just wondered if you could talk about that with us. Yeah, thank you. Um, it's, it's changed a lot. And um, it, I feel like it's uh, maybe a trajectory that um, is a little uncommon. I don't know if it is. I, I haven't heard of other photographers going through this, but um, when I first started, everything was uh, close up, blurry, abstract. You couldn't make out anything, um, which I love and I still use to my work in my work now. Um, but as I've gone on, I've started to sort of add small figurative elements. I definitely still describe myself as an abstract artist, abstract photographer, um, but I'm adding in some more things where people can actually say, oh, that's a flower. That's a, I can see a letter there. I can start to read that. Um, and I think that's maybe, I, I don't know, the, the, um, I'm not sure why it's progressed that way exactly, except that, um, you know, the response from, from others being able to connect and see things um, is, you know, something that I really like and having conversations about the work. So, um, you know, I, I'm not sure where it'll go next, but um, I'm liking having just a little, a little element of figurative, although I'll always have that, like the abstract beginnings. So um, yeah, that's a great question. Thank you. So I just want to thank all artists again. And um, just say again, this is an amazing show. And if you want to spend a little more time looking at the pieces, they're all up on Artsy. Um, you can find the link to the Artsy show on 440 Gallery's website. Um, and uh, again, I'll encourage you to come into the gallery and see them for yourself. And uh, I also want to mention that the next show, that this shows up through April 18th, and then we have Joanne AC Urban Stories opening on April 21st. So um, thank you, everyone. <laughs> thank you for coming. <laughs> thank you, everybody, for coming. We appreciate you. And if you uh, if you want to just chat as we say goodbye to Lee and the other artists, uh, we'll be here for a couple more minutes. <laughs> if you get a chance, try to go to the gallery. It's really, yeah. really beautiful. And you see so much up close. Um, just, it's fabulous. Both shows are fabulous. Thanks for sharing all your, your um, process and your inspiration. It's great. Thanks, Joanne. Should I keep talking? <laughs> <laughs> so fun. Thank you all. Lee, it was just so fun to hear you speak about your work. I'm related to her, sort of, yeah. <laughs> and you're a grown up now, and it's just thrilling. This is very cool to see. And oh, thank you. you. As an adult woman artist in your own right, <laughs> doing really well. So I don't know the rest of you. Someday maybe I'll meet you, but uh, it's lovely. <laughs> thank you for sharing your time, everybody. Thanks for coming. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, thank, thank you. you thank you coming. all. Thank you. Thank you so mm -hmm. much. Hi, Lee. Hi. Hi, Ann Carol here. Hi. Hi, sweetie. Boy, that was just beautiful. I love all of your works. And of course, I have oh, thank one you. of the first ones on the- I one, know. One, <laughs> which I always remembered that you really liked how, how I had it framed, because uh, it is framed. Yes. And so yes. 
look at it every single day. Ah, oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> but uh, that your colors you used are just amazing. Just oh, thank you. Oh my gosh, uh, the 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 green is just gorgeous. So I wish we could come see them in person. So we should go to the website. Um, Artsy is that. Yeah, so Artsy has all of them on there, and I'm going to add um, some installation shots too, because um, I, I think that also helps people kind of understand okay. what it all looks like. So it's called Artsy. Yeah, the website is artsy.net. Okay. And Great. if you search for the gallery 440 Gallery, um, okay. it's all there. Hi, Lee. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Carol. <laughs> Lee, Hi, you, uh, you spoke so beautifully about your artwork. Oh, thank you. I loved everything you could, you described it in terms that were, some of them, I took notes. Some of them were new to me. Oh. <laughs> I've never heard of a photogram. Yeah, yeah. It's a really early photographic technique. Yeah, I, I love them. Well, your work They're really is, fun. <laughs> your work is really beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. It was fun to see family members. I thought it was such, I was so tickled and honored when I got the invitation. I said, I'm going to plan my Saturday. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> Thank you. Me too, Lee. <laughs> I, I saw Rick and Ann on here a few minutes ago, I, but then I, they must have left. Yes, they, they called me, so I'm going to have to <laughs> call them back at some point. I'm sure they want to chat. Uh, say hi to them for me. I heard Anna's questions. They were good. And say hi to yeah. everybody. Okay. I will. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. much. Okay. Oh, yes, I, I'll pass that along. His question was so okay. funny. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it was. It was perfect. <laughs> Bye now. All right. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Lee. Bye.